Hi, this is a review of the Garmin Forerunner 645 Music. Yeah. So I'm just going to quickly run through the features of this of this uh, smartwatch, and uh, I've got a few comparisons um, over the years. I've used various Fitbit watches, and also um, most recently the New Balance Run IQ. So the Fitbit ones have also been the Blaze and the Surge. Now the New Balance Run IQ promised to be something which I was hoping uh, from a smartwatch what I was going to what I was going to finally be the watch that I wanted. I'm not a professional runner, I run for leisure and uh, really I just wanted a watch which I could rely upon. So the things that really shouted out for me about the new Balance Run IQ was that it did, um, did my music without having to rely on having my mobile phone with me when I run because it just weighs me down. Uh, so obviously then connected to wireless Bluetooth headphones and then also had a number of apps which were available directly from the App Store, the uh, Google Play App Store. So it kind of made this, it made it an all-round watch. It was running Android Watch OS, and so it really looked like everything was good on the front, as well as it did, um, it did uh, Strava integration, and I was using Strava quite a lot with my friends at the time. So... The problem with that watch particularly was that it was very slow, it was cumbersome and when you tried to put music on it, it didn't really work that well. It tried to use uh, Google Play Music, which I do use, and it tried to stream the music but the, the small processor in it made everything not work so well and in the end the, um, the, app, the apps on it didn't really work either, the GPS was poor. So it took me a while to come round to getting this device because uh, Garmin for me has always been a sort of independent brand. It's always been, you know, it doesn't have any of the familiarity that I am used to, and it doesn't obviously play with the um, the Google App Store or the Apple um, world of things. So ultimately, uh, I I wasn't certainly sure about the the Garmin device, but I thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot. So. Uh, just to, before we get started on the review and what uh, what I think is good and what I think about is, is bad, I'll just quickly show you the box and what you get in it. So this is the box here. It's pretty small. There's not an awful lot to it. Certainly, don't judge a box <laughs> by its uh, by what's inside it. Don't judge a book by its cover. This one here is um, is pretty scant on details. Um, I'll just hold that up there for you. Um, it does say a few things on there. It does tell you it claims a seven-day uh, battery life on, in watch mode. So obviously if you weren't using it for running uh, at all uh, or any kind of fitness, then perhaps it will last for seven days. And it says if you're using it for GPS and music, it will it'll last for five hours. So it uh, also got storage for up to 500 s songs. And you can take it uh, swimming at 5 ATM. So... The features that main features that brags is music, wrist-based heart rate, thing called Garmin Pay, which is uh, contactless payment via your watch, has running dynamics, training status, and finally Connect IQ. Now Connect IQ is their mobile app, and is available for iOS as well as Android. In the box, you receive three things: one, the watch, of course; two. The charging cable, which I'll just put down here. You can see the strange adapter on the other side there. And then, oh, not the camera. <laughs> and then finally, um, various um, guides. So this one here is just the safety and product information. So that's something you want to put in the bin. Um, this one here is the Forerunner Quick Start Guide. And... Um, I'd like to say it's um, extremely helpful, but it doesn't have enough information to get started with using the device. It is, however, um, worthwhile. You will read it, but then you think you'll find that you need to go onto the website. I'm pretty tech savvy, I would say. Um, generally, I, I work in IT, and uh, generally I, I can pick up most devices and get going with them, but there were certainly some things which I found incredibly difficult to uh, figure out around navigating the device. So things, a few things you should um, be aware of with the device. First of all, a lot of the uh, the devices that you'll be familiar with in the smartwatch 
and fitness watch um, world is that they have touch screen. This device does not. Um, now you may be able to see there as well that there, it's not illuminated in any way but if I press the button on the side there you can see it lights up. So but the, the great thing here is that it doesn't actually need to be lit in all but the darkest of situations. You can see quite clearly here the display of the watch without having to light it up. So obviously if you're in a dark um, situation you, you, you certainly have that option. Now that button is pretty much all it does, it lights up the watch and you can see it goes off after a moment there. The other watch buttons are multi-purpose buttons. So uh, the number two button here is the start stop button and that allows you to start a run. You can see there the timer is ready and it's telling you that the GPS signal is not acquired um, with this red symbol here. Now that's fair enough, I'm indoors so I wouldn't expect to get any signal um, for GPS at the moment. But you can see there it's saying it's connected to the phone and, um, and it's trying to get my heart rate as well. So I'll just press back there and then you can see you've got different options. The buttons on the other side here, this one here in the middle is up and this one here is down. And um, one of the first things which I found um, incredibly strange is that both the Connect IQ and the watch independently have their own settings. So I would have thought that you would been able to make all of the settings via the Connect IQ app, and if not, then on the phone itself, uh, on the device itself. Unfortunately, some of the settings are on both of the watch and on the app, but then there's some which are not on. It's only on one, but not the other, which led to a lot of confusion. And in fact, in this case, I'd, I wanted to change from miles to kilometers. In the app, there is no way to change your device to kilometers. You have to hold down the up button, which is something I didn't even know existed. It doesn't tell you anything about that in the manual. And you can see here, there are a number of options here. And one of them is settings. And you can go in and deep down inside here, there is an option, in fact, to change um, to, uh, to kilometers. What I also found is that um, I'm still fig figuring things out. Uh, so for example, the um, ability to change the lap length. Now laps are still done in miles. And this is not a big deal for me because I don't really care about laps that much. As you can see there, you can change the watch face from within this, um, this slider. And there's lots of different watch faces available on the Connect IQ store, which is part of the app. But you can see I've installed a few here just to give you an idea of the different faces you can have. There's lots of different apps or applets and widgets inside uh, the App Store, so you know um, it's it's quite a quite a uh, an extensive list that you can get from there of different types of applications. So by all means, um, you you could find yourself lost in there for a long time looking at all the different stuff. And that's all through the Connect IQ app on your phone. So what else does it do? Um, here are a few pros and cons, which I, I think uh, really um, really kind of made sure that the, the watch that I have here is uh, one that I'm going to keep hold of. Um, the last the, uh, New Balance one, I had to take home, uh, take it back to the shop. Um, it just wasn't any good. So in terms of um, the cons, first of all, let's go through the bad points. Number one, this charger thing. Uh, it doesn't come with a charger, it just is the cable. And as you may be able to see, it's rather short. And so plugging it in um, tends to be on a, you know, a USB charger, which I've got for another phone, uh, which I had lying around the house, or it can go into your laptop or something. But the problem is that usually you want it beside your bed or something like that, so you wake up in the morning and you stick it on first thing. Um, the problem there is that the cable won't stretch to your bedside cabinet or something like that. So it's a minor complaint, it's not really a big deal, uh, but it is something to, to be aware of. Um, 
the buttons I find, now maybe this is deliberate, but you really got to press them, especially the start stop button. It does seem to, um, and you can see the delay there, it took a few seconds, so sometimes it's a bit misleading um, to, to when you press the button. But most of the time there is no major lag on this device. Um, headphones. Uh, with um, their, Garmin actually do their own brand of wireless headphones and I haven't tried them out yet but I have um, fairly normal uh, I've got the Backbeat Fit which I've actually got another review on and, and they're pretty decent headphones uh, and for the most part they work just fine but I have had an occasion or two where the device the, uh, the watch just plain won't connect to the um, the headphones no matter what you do so I've switched the watch off restarted it switched the uh, headphones off put them back into pair mode all that sort of stuff and it just would not pair with the the watch whatsoever so um, I don't know why that is sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't uh, my review here is coming to you from New Zealand so I tried the um, the wallet service out to see if I could use my credit card uh, which is just a MasterCard with um, with the uh, with the Garmin wallet service, which is the contact contactless uh, wallet. Unfortunately, it's not available in this country, and I don't know which countries it is available in. But um, I would dare say it will be available in the United States. Um, and then finally, probably my biggest bugbear, and the one that I thought was going to be the case anyway before I bought it, and that is that it doesn't connect to any streaming music services. So if you're a fan of Spotify or Google Play Music or Apple Music, of any of those sort of streaming services, there is no app on the watch that will allow you to uh, stream or download the music to the device. So what you have to do is take your USB charger cable and plug one end instead into your laptop and then download the app on your laptop that you allow to, allows you to synchronize your music. So the biggest problem with this is most people these days are using Spotify or Google Play Music and so they're streaming their music with a plan that they pay you know, $10 for a month or something along those lines. The problem with that is you don't own that music, it's a streaming music service. So if you want to upload those those tunes or playlists to your watch, you can't. You must buy the music outright and have it stored on your laptop before you can actually put it on your uh, Forerunner 645. So it's a major flaw and is obviously one which uh, is is not an issue on other watches. So just be aware of um, of that before you embark on using this device. For me, I used to use iTunes way way back and um, and I didn't rely on um, having a streaming music service like I do now so all of the old music that I have is still on the hard drive of my laptop so I just synchronize that all over but obviously if you spent most of your time using Spotify or something similar then you're going to have problems there so probably that is my biggest bugbear about the uh, device so on the good side um, Garmin obviously came from a background of making GPS devices. So um, before they dealt with anything fitness, they were in the business of making GPS. So you'd like to hope that the GPS on the watch was of, um, of a strong performer. And I'm happy to say that I've never had any problems with the GPS whatsoever. It really is excellent. Um, you know, obviously it takes a moment to, to get a lock, but uh, once it's got a lock, it's absolutely fine. There's no problems with its performance at all. Um, another thing about it is that the device itself is extremely lightweight. You will not really complain about the weight or the chunkiness of the device. It's pretty thin and um, really doesn't... Um, doesn't feel like it, and in fact it actually looks bigger there uh, than I than I feel it is. But it, you know, it's a, it's a definitely lightweight device. It doesn't have the sort of chunk to it that um, say the, the uh, New Balance Run IQ did. Um, it's probably uh, close to the Fitbit Surge in terms of weight, but I uh, certainly feel like it's it's a nice, easy to wear watch. The strap itself is a nice sort of rubbery feel to it, and. Um, Again, it's very, very nice on the skin. I've not had any sort of problems with that. I did have, um, when I used the Fitbit, um, used it back in the day, I had sort of like 
problems where I just need to take the, the, the uh, watch off for a few days because it just irritated my skin. Uh, another thing about the, um, the, the device is that it's got a great heart rate monitor. Uh, the monitoring of the heart seems to, f from your wrist, seems pretty accurate. Um, I've tr I've tried to um, review this as possible as much as possible for accuracy because I go to the gym and when I'm at the gym, I compare the pulse rate that I'm seeing on the uh, on the cross trainer or something like that with the 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 rate on the watch itself, and I'm happy to say that they do often line up pretty well. The overall system itself on the watch is a pretty fast system so there are no major lags that I can speak of. You can see when I press a button it goes through all the widgets on the device um, and it doesn't doesn't do it with any major delay. I'm not I'm not uh, not too fussed about any sort of uh, major delay. You can see it running through all the widgets that are on the device. <coughs> without any issues so no no major lag there uh, what I also do is I use Strava and um, the integration with Strava and other apps seems to work pretty well so I don't know if you can make that out on the on the camera here but you can see uh, the the run I did the other day and you can see how well the GPS has provided um, information to Strava but that's all been synchronized directly to Strava from the watch so uh, the integrations are pretty decent um, there is nothing that it hasn't um, recorded uh, and put into Strava so it seems to be pretty compatible <clears throat> I don't think there's any major problems with the way the, the device works with, with Strava there are other running apps which it can connect to as well, but Strava is the one that I've uh, been using for a wee while now. Um, in terms of battery life, this is always a biggie for everybody buying one of these. Um, Fitbit, I used to get about three to four days. Um, <clears throat> on the New Balance, I got about a, a day. Um, so this one here, typically I'll get about three to four days. And again, it all depends on how much I'm using it, what I'm using it for. Um, but uh, obviously if I was just simply using it as a watch and nothing else then perhaps I would get seven days. I highly doubt it but um, there you go. I don't think I've ever had seven days consecutive use uh, from it. You can see there I've received a message that come in um, and uh, the notifications on the device um, are, are pretty neat. I think that um, although the, the um, the integration of the notifications is um, is not native. It does seem to work fairly well, um, and you can be selective about which apps you want to uh, have notifications on your device as well. So, uh, inside the Connect IQ app, you can actually say, "Oh, I want to uh, see the app, uh, the notifications from MS sorry Facebook Messenger, but I don't want to see the ones from WhatsApp." Uh, so that that in itself is is um, I think reasonably unique. I haven't uh, come across that before on other smartwatches. Um, and uh, and and then finally the ability to swim at five meters. Now I haven't done this myself. I'm always too wary of taking devices um, swimming. If this was a sort of cross training watch and it was used, if it was specifically built for water, then I would I would take it swimming, but this device I think is um, is not necessarily built in that that regard. It's just a you know a small length, so taking it out on a run and it getting soaked um, in the rain or something like that, I don't think that will be a problem whatsoever. But um, I certainly don't think this device is made for swimming with. So um, exercise caution when you when you think about taking it swimming. I'll just give you a quick demonstration of the Connect IQ app. Uh, so this is what it looks like when you first start it. There's a bit of a dashboard um, and it shows you um, what you've been up to for the day. There's also um, a little uh, tray over to the left hand side there that shows you, um, for example, you can go into activities and see um, the, the running that you've been doing. 
and this you can see that I've not been doing very much running at all uh, which is terrible so I'll move right along uh, you can see all sorts of stats so obviously if you keep your device on at night you can see how much sleep you've had and whether you've been hitting your goal of um, sleep so my average sleep over the last seven days has been eight hours and seven so that's fantastic um, didn't know that that's brilliant and then there's all these sorts of things here. Um, so VO2 max is um, something I'm still trying to get to grips with and, and figure out what it actually means. But VO2 max um, <clears throat> is the maximum volume of oxygen in millimeters, uh, sorry, milliliters, that you can consume per minute per kilogram of your body weight at your maximum performance. So um, if you got any of that, um, I think if you've got good VO2 max, then it's a good thing, but I've got no idea how to use it or anything along those lines. Um, so you, if, you, if you're really a professional, these sorts of things um, can, be, can be very helpful, I'm sure. And you can see uh, I've, got, I've done a few workouts uh, across the week, and you can see the different zones I've been in there. So anaerobic, I was in, uh, I think these are um, not minutes, these are um, scores. Um, to tell you how much you've um, spent in a particular zone. Uh, so um, in this particular day here, I spent um, 2.3 is sort of a score that I got in the anaerobic fitness zone, and then 3.2 was the improving of the lactate threshold. So I think that's what this indicates here, 3.2, improves your lactate threshold, and that was in the aerobic zone, and I think that was when I did a workout last week. And so there's all those sorts of things here, but most of the time you probably spend yourself, spend your time at this sort of dashboard view. Uh, so for example, the heart rate, that is your current heart rate uh, with the resting and high heart rate there. How many steps you've done today. Um, so oh, my target is uh, 10,000 per day. Obviously I haven't done very much so far today. And, and how much intensity minutes. This is a weekly goal. Uh, so I'm supposed to do 512 um uh, sorry, I'm supposed to do 150 uh, a week, a week, and I've done 512. So thank goodness I've got one of them. This is also quite interesting. I'm still unsure as to how it measures this metric, but according to this, I've spent eight hours 51 in the rest zone of stress. Um, there's been 38 minutes of low, medium is one hour 33, and I've been super stressed for 15 minutes, and I think that's in the last 24 hours. You can always lock in for further details. So, for example, there you can see when I've been stressed today. And you can see yesterday, this is a bit more useful, yesterday I ran 10.04 kilometres, which took me 56 minutes, and you can see that I'm not exactly the world's fastest runner, it, took, it was 5.40 per kilometre. But you, you've got all the steps there, I did plenty of steps um, um, in that, and I did 11 floors and so forth, so all of those things um, uh, you know, are there, and then you can get the whole, um, the whole week as well, two workouts, two runs heart rate, steps, floors, all that sort of stuff, so you can know how you're, you're shaping up. This is the calendar view. Um, it shows you what you've done, your activity and so forth. I really don't find it very good. I, I can't really tell what's going on there. It's, it's difficult to know. Um, but you can see yesterday I did a run, and I think that's signified by uh, yeah the green there. So you really have to know um, what the colours mean before it's any use to you. Um, you can go about and see what you've you've been doing in your run. There's also these challenges things, so um, you can you can uh, work with the fitness instructors that um, the uh, the Garmin folk have made up. There's um, some sort of challenge you can do. So I've got to do sixty five thousand steps, um, and I've got nine weeks left on that challenge. I can't even recall um, doing it, but uh, look, I'm almost there at the goal. So. Um, hopefully I will be ma able to manage um, I've got 9 hours to get up to 65,000 I've done 61,000 so let's see if I can uh, bash those steps out today and I'll be alright so yeah that's that's the app in general um, if you click on the or touch on the device that you have so in this case the 645 Forerunner then you can see all the, um, the configuration settings for the device itself and as soon as the device syncs, which you can force by pressing this button up the top, um, you, it, all the changes that you make in here will be automatically synchronized to the device. Now, 
as I was saying earlier on about um, streaming music, there are a number of apps for music and there are their own Garmin streaming music services. But yet again, uh, they're completely useless to me because they are either um, uh, in another language, uh, which I think is Japanese, or in, in the other cases, the ones that are in English are um, not available in New Zealand. So completely useless as well. So it's, it's pretty unfortunate. Um, if you've got any um, comments on that one, put them in the comments box below and let me know if you're having any more luck uh, in a country other than the United States. But uh, yeah, it's not not doesn't work at all in New Zealand, which is a real shame. Um, this is where you can change your watch faces and also add widgets. So I'll just I'll just quickly go into this. I'm not going to spend much time in here. But you can see I've got two there already, and then if you press get more watch faces, you get redirected to the app store, and you can see there's a whole host of different watch faces available. You can also go into the widgets, and th these are sort of little apps that will do things for you, which are sometimes pretty useful. Uh, so these are the ones that um, you get with the Garmin, and you can see that there is also the timer widget, which I've installed as well. There wasn't really a very good timer built into the the uh, the watch itself, which I find really odd. Why would you not want to have a timer? Um, there's also some other apps which I've got there. For example, there's weather um, and uh, there's a forecast as well. So, But there's lots of different apps in the App Store, or widgets, as they're called here. You can see the most popular ones. There's AccuWeather and uh, there's a battery meter and a maps widget which is quite cool. So there's lots of different um, lots of different uh, apps that you can get from the store, music and more. You can see the, the ones I was talking about there earlier on. Okay so they're, they're pretty cool um, and you can just simply press the download button. So that's pretty much all the things that pop out to me on the um, on the uh, Connect IQ app. Um, I, I think this is, I've been running with the watch now for about, uh, about two months, um, maybe just under two months, and I've yet to have any major problems with the device. So obviously I've spoken about the cons, but those, those are cons about the features that the, it has or the limitations, specifically the music one I think is the, the biggest one for me. Um, the, the fact that the headphones haven't worked a number of times also is a bit of a, a pest, but, um, but other than that, the device has worked extremely well and as its, as its main function of being a running watch and uh, taking in all the data, the GPS, the heart rate, um, obviously telling the time and its ability to do your uh, your watch notifications and so forth, it really does do an excellent job. So uh, I would highly recommend this watch. Um, as I say, had it for about a month and a half, two months, and it hasn't let me down really in any way that I've uh, particularly felt that it's not worthy of being on my wrist. So for right now, this is the watch that I'm, uh, I've been most happy with over all the other different types of watches. So, uh, yep, uh, definitely worthwhile having a look into it. Thanks very much for uh, watching my review, and if you've got any questions or comments, please hit me up below in the comments section. Thank you.